So this time we're going to make a sort of a phone, a phone box that when you approach it, if you press the button, it'll play a sound um, and we'll make it a 3D sound as well. So it should be fairly straightforward. First thing we're going to do is quickly create a blueprint actor. We'll call it phone box underscore BP. And I've not got a, a mesh for this, so I'm just going to add a cube which I'll raise up here and scale it to make it look a little bit like a phone box. A second cube. There you go. This is my sort of ye olde style phone box, which I'll totally do for now. But with this, what we're gonna to need to do, most importantly, is add a box collider. So the part where because if we press a button to answer the phone, we don't want that button to be always accessible. We only want it to be accessible if we are overlapping this area. So let's say we only want to do it if we're stood in front of the box, if we're stood in front of the phone box, about here. All right, we'll just say that is the front of our phone box and we'll make it a little bit more obvious, just so in game I know what that's gonna look like. So I'm just going to give it a bit of a nose. There you go. Looks more like a speed camera, but it'll do. Right, in our third person blueprint, let's find ourselves some space. And what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a, a new actor, a new blueprint called phone box actor. And notice the lack of spaces. Don't forget in your drop down to change it to actor type and we're just going to say compiler net and we can just use our defaults again so when actor begins overlap with phone box what we'll do is we'll just do a quick print string oops so just to make sure that this works so when we overlap with the phone box we want it to say hello Let's get our phone box and let's drag it here. So this is our phone box, we'll approach it. Didn't work because we've not actually set it. So um, let's make sure it's a public actor, compile it, click on our fella, wherever he is, here he is. And we've now got this public actor phone box. And I'm just going to get my pipette tool, click, click, boom. Uh, let's get a test and then hopefully, hello, done. That's working, nice and simple. Um, but instead we're going to want to bring in some sound. So I'm just gonna use the input button and I'm just gonna see, it's just an audio file. Um, this is actually just music, but you'll probably want like dialogue or whatever audio you want. And if we double click in the text part of this, we can see a bit more information about it. So because mine's audio, I could tell it to loop if I want to, because it could be background music. Um, but we're not gonna worry too much about this for now. But what we are going to do is we want to make it a 3D sound. So when we're close to the phone box up here and we'll walk away, we don't. So I'm gonna right click in some space and go to sounds. I'm gonna create a sound attenuation which I'm just gonna leave as default name, which is a very bad thing to do. And we're going to open it up by just hitting enter on it. And we can see in here that now we've got sound attenuation, it's got inner radius, and it's got the amount of fall off. Um, so you know, these are just stuff you could mess with if you wanted to. But in back in our sound, where we've got our attenuation, if we scroll down, we can now select a new sound attenuation, which actually I'm going to rename because it's bad. Um, phone attenuation. I'm just going to drag it and drop it in there. Dragged and dropped. For example, now if I put my sound actually in my scene, you can see this sphere that represents the attenuation. Um, but I don't actually want it in my sound. So I'm going to 
go to my actor, open my actor, and instead of printing hello, what we'll want to do is we will want what will we want to do? Um, we're going to want a, a button press. So, actually, with this, I'm going to get my phone box again and we'll just do this the slightly messy but easy way. And we're going to create a new variable, a new bool. Um, we'll just call it in range. Switch it to a boolean, is a true or false, and we're going to want to set. So when we are in range, we'll say it's in range, we'll duplicate that with control W and untick. So when we're in range and when we end, we set that to true. And I'm not going to set up an input for this, I'm just going to type in keyboard. Should I do an input? I should do an input. Um, okay. Stop being lazy, we'll do it properly. Input project settings. And then we'll scroll down till we find input and we'll create a new action mapping. We've already got jump, which is our face bottom. Um, so we're already using that one. So we'll just call this interact. And I will say face left, which is the square. In my keyboard on my gamepad or oh, we could just do z as well all right so we want interact when interact is pressed and we're going to ask the question if uh, if statement branch if in range is true then we're going to want to Play sound. Um, we'll do play sound at location, and it's going to say, "At what location do you want to do?" And we'll just get the location of our arrow. Get location. And don't forget to actually set it. So now, when we press our phone box, so if I press interact now nothing's happening but if I walk to my phone box and I'm in space it plays the sound and then if I walk away that sound fades out but if I come back interact notice I'm hammering square there um, just need to do a once we've played it we just want to set it to out of range, so it just can't be set again until we leave. So we'd have to leave and come back, so we don't want to keep hammering it. Um, there you go, nice and straightforward. Um, phone booth audio, phone booth audio, cool.